Hi, I'm Alexis, a consultant here at Valiantis. Let's talk about chat integrations with Alassian Assist. Alassian Assist is an integration that is made specifically for Jira service management. Assist introduces conversational ticketing for your customers to submit tickets without having to go to the help center. With its integration with Slack and Microsoft Teams, your customers can raise a request by sending a message in a channel. Customers can communicate with agents in the ticket by communicating in the thread. Even approvals required on tickets can be completed without having to go to your email. Assist is also not just for your customers. Assist provides a separate agent channel to allow agents to triage, update, and work on tickets. In this video, we'll go over the integrations on Slack and Microsoft Teams. Both systems provide the same basic features, however, Slack does have a few additional notification options and agent features that Microsoft Teams does not currently. First, let's navigate to the setting to configure chat. Click on Project Settings and then click on the chat on the left-hand side. Then click the system you want to integrate with. When you click on it with Slack, it will detect what workspace you currently have. At the top right, you can select which one you're looking to connect and then hit Allow. For Microsoft Teams, it'll prompt you to open up the configuration within the Microsoft Teams application. To set up each system, it will guide you with a set of instructions to how to set up both your agent channel and your customer channel. Once you've connected your Slack workspace, it'll look like this. From here, you can customize the request types that will be visible to those channels. You can select if you want tickets to automatically be created each time a message is sent. If you disable this, you will have to manually create tickets by adding a reaction to which I will demonstrate later. In Microsoft Teams, you have to manually create ticket by going to the additional actions menu. These two settings I've highlighted are available in both Slack and Microsoft Teams. The rest of the options that you see here on this page are only available with Slack at the moment. These additional settings allow you to customize notifications that the agent in the agent channel as well as in the request channels will get. Slack also gives you the ability to make responses and updates on a ticket public in the channels created or stay private to just the requester. Something Slack also has that Microsoft Teams does not yet is the ability to create a ticket with a reaction, which I will also demonstrate in Slack. So without further ado, let's get into the Slack integration. Within the Slack integration now, we have our two channels that are for our integration. We have our agent channel and we have our help channel, which is our requester channel. Along with the help channel for the requesters right here, tickets can also be created through the Assist app, which I will display later. Let's go ahead and submit a request. So I'll go ahead and click on the comment box and I will type in my issue. You can see here that it's telling me, okay, it's reacting, I'm going to start creating my ticket and it's only visible to me. Please click raise a request to continue the request. So I'm going to do that. Now we can see here, it's telling me what do you need help with? And it's giving me the options that I told it that I wanted to be visible on the help channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my request type. Now we can see here, it has brought up the fields for the request. At this moment, the assist bot does not support using dynamic forms or performer forms. So the fields that you see here are only going to be fields that are made available on the request form on the request type. Not all fields are supported. You'd have to look at documentation to make sure. So we see here that it took my message, computer on fire. It put that as a summary. Description and type of beer are optional. So I don't have to fill those out. If you're an agent in the, in the project, you'll have the option just like you do on the portal to submit on behalf of someone. But by default, when you go to create, it's gonna automatically set it as you. So with all my information filled out, but I'll just add a description. Now I have my description, I'll go ahead and hit submit to create the ticket. And now we saw a few things happen here. So number one, we can see that it's telling me that uh, a request was raised to add comments, go to the request in your direct messages with assist, and it's telling you that any comments that are added here will not be posted and synced to the ticket. This is because all the updates are going to be synced privately. So I could either click on the assist bot here and go to app or I can just click on the assist spot as it sees I have a notification. Once I go there, I can see that my ticket here is submitted. If I click on here, I can see that 
it shows me a confirmation that it was raised. It shows here my ticket number, so I can click on that. And what that's going to do, it's going to take me directly to the portal. And now this is the portal view of my ticket. So if I wanted to leave a comment, so if I want to comment in my ticket, I would just click on the thread and I will say, uh, and I'll hit send. So now anything I comment in this thread, it's going to sync to ticket. So if I go back to the portal and I hit refresh, we can see here my comment has synced. So this will work the same way for uh, the agents who are commenting on your ticket. You will see here the log of all the comments. They're all going to be right here and they will also be on your Slack thread. I also did mention that you can also submit tickets through the SysBot. So if we go to the home, we can see right here it says raise a request. With the SysBot, because you can connect multiple projects to have the assist be used through Slack. The assist is going to show any projects that have the assist linked. So in this case, right now I only have one project linked, so I don't have to worry about seeing different ones. But if I had an HR project linked and I went to submit through the assist spot, it would ask me if I wanted to submit to the HR project or to the current project that I'm on, which is ACP box. So through here, it will show me a few more than it did before because this is going to show me what we made available to the bot itself. So I'll go ahead and still just submit again. And if you ever say you click the wrong request type and you want to resubmit, unfortunately there is no back button. You do have to click cancel in order to go back and retry. So I can go ahead and then click raise request again and then I can select the proper request type. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a new mobile device. And what's cool is that the assist bot can also handle approvals. So I'm going to submit this on behalf of someone else and say, and then here it's asking me who's my manager. So I can go ahead and select myself. And this is optional, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'll go ahead and hit submit. And so now what we're going to see here is once this submits, I have a message in this workflow of new mobile device. So it automatically goes for approval. And we can see here without having to even go to my email, I have my approval directly here and I can go ahead and then approve this ticket or decline. You can also click show details which should give you any more information. That would be if there was any more additional fields like description, or maybe you had a drop down field to select the type of phone, you would see that here. You could approve it either through right here, or if you clicked on the hyperlink to the ticket, it'll take you directly to the portal where you could approve. But we'll just go ahead and hit approve. And now we can see here, it says that I approved the request. And then if I go back to the ticket and I refresh, we can see here it showed that I approved the request. Now let's get into what agents can do. So we can see here, I'll go to my agent channel and we can see here that it shows that I had submitted the request. I can take it, meaning I can assign it to myself. Expand would just show additional information, which that was filled out in the issue. So the only additional field at that point we filled out was just who the manager is. So if we go ahead and click edit, we can edit any of the available fields that are on that issue. So with that, the agent channel in Slack is very helpful. On Teams, which I'll get into in a minute, it's not as in-depth and you can't customize and do as much, but let's get into it. So when we go on the Microsoft Teams integration side, I have my agent channel and I have my request channel. Unlike Slack, where you can choose to have it automatically create a ticket on a message, Teams does not unfortunately work like that, so I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead to create a new ticket. So I'll say computer is on fire again. And I'll go ahead and hit post. So now in order to create ticket in Microsoft Teams, I have to go to the additional actions menu here 
and then I have to click create to get with assist. So now we can see here, it's going to show me all the request types that I made visible to the assist. So I'll go ahead and click get IT help and hit next. And just like we saw with Slack, the, here are the fields that are made available on the request form to fill out. As we can see, summary is the only field right now that shows required, so I'll just leave it as that, and I'll hit raise request. So we can see here, I got some notifications that are showing me that it was created. By default, you can't turn on for Microsoft Teams to have updates be publicly in a channel because they're automatically made private by default. So we can see here I got some activity and chat, so let's go into it. So it's telling me to please check a message from the assist bot, so let's go see it. So here we go. I got my message. It's telling me that I raised the request, currently unassigned. This is the request type. If I want to reply, I can add a message within it. And very similar to how Slack had it, if I click on the hyperlink, it'll take me to the ticket inside the portal. And we can see here the message also synced. Something that is pretty cool about Microsoft Teams that Slack does not currently have is this little tickets tab right here. And so when you click that, this brings you, you have the option of my issues and my requests my request is what you have physically raised, meaning you're the reporter. My issues is meant for the agent side, where it is an agent in the project. Here's all the tickets that you have visibility to, including ones that you have reported and ones that you haven't, and even ones that you are the assignee on. For these ones, if you click on one of the entries, you'll be given on the right-hand side information about the ticket, which is very nice. Just like with Slack, we can also submit a ticket directly through the assist bot. So I can go ahead and type a message and say, now, because the assist doesn't automatically create tickets, it's going to always give you the I didn't understand message. So to create ticket, we just have to go to the more actions menu again, and then click create ticket. And then we can select here. So since I lost my device, let's go ahead and request a new one. So now, unlike Slack as well, it doesn't give you the option to initially raise the request on behalf of someone else. So we'll say who is my manager. We'll put the manager and we'll go ahead and hit raise request. So now we can see here that my request has been raised and that I can reply. And then if I go to the ticket link, it will bring me to the issue on the portal. So now let's look at the approvals on Microsoft Teams. Since I can't change the requester submitting on Teams, I'm just gonna go ahead and submit ticket via the portal. So I've gone ahead and filled it out and I'm showing that I Billy Mallard is the manager, so I'll go ahead and hit send. So now we see this has been submitted, so I'll go ahead to Microsoft Teams, and we can see here that it's picked up that Billy is the approver, and I have the approve and decline buttons here similar to Slack. And if I also click on the link, it'll take me to the portal section, and I can approve or deny. So if we go ahead and hit approve, it's telling me that I approve the request and that I don't need to take any further action. And if I go to the ticket on the portal and I refresh, I can see here that it does show it's transitioned. As the agent to edit the ticket, unfortunately, while you do have visibility in the agent channel, if you do want to edit, when you click it, it does take you back to that ticket section, which is where you then can edit there. So the agent channel is more so of just of viewing or assigning it to yourself, a feature that has been recently acquired by Atlassian from Help. As time goes on, we should be seeing some improvements to both Slack and Teams that should help make things easier for not only your customers, but for your agents as well. Hopefully you've learned from this demo and you've learned how to configure Assist, and after seeing the benefits, you might even implement it yourself. Thanks for watching.